Hey guys, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are gonna look at creating an enhanced luminance file for the purpose of sharpening our data, our color data in uh, PixInsight. Now, this method was uh, brought to my attention by a friend of mine, Mike. He found it online and uh, he sent me the link. He thought it would make a good video. Um, videos, I agree entirely, making a video of it is, is a fantastic idea because um, sometimes people learn better visually, uh, seeing how something is done rather than reading about it so um, that's the purpose of this video is to just give you a visual representation of how this uh, method can be done and uh, used to uh, sharpen your uh, astro images that you're processing in PixInsight. Now just to give some credit to the uh, the gentleman that originally posted the information I'm not sure if he actually um, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if he actually uh, came up with this himself or if this is something he found on the forums and uh, just posted, uh, applied and posted on his website so that others could, uh, could benefit. But um, I'll just switch my screens here. So uh, the website wa uh, is Chaotic Nebula and the gentleman's name is da uh, Daniel Feller. And uh, he details the, uh, the method here on his webpage. So... The technique is rather simple. I've modified it slightly for my purposes, but it's pretty much the same, uh, same method overall. So let's get started. Let's uh, show you how this is done. So we've got our color image here. This is the RGB data, the, the, the color image that was taken with a one-shot color camera, the QHY268C that I have. And it's an excellent camera for color imaging. Um, a, a very great, cool CMOS camera that uh, I've had uh, excellent uh, uh, experience with, uh, experiences with, and uh, highly recommend. Um, I also used for this image the Optolong L-Extreme filter, which is a very popular filter out there for uh, one-shot color imagers. And uh, I was focusing on the... Uh, uh, Witch's Broom, the Veil Nebula, uh, NGC 6960, I believe this is, and we've got Pickering's Triangle at the bottom. So now this uh, color data, I have um, pretty much processed it. So in that regard, I've done a uh, dynamic crop to the, uh, to the image. I've done a background extraction. Um, I've done color calibration. I've stretched the image, applied some noise reduction, and uh, so forth. So this is... Uh, uh, Pretty much fully processed aside from the sharpening uh, side of it and maybe some color tweaking. Sharpening is also something that you want to do in the final steps. Uh, you don't want to uh, apply it too early on in the processing. It's something that comes, uh, um, if not last, at least near the end of your processing workflow. So what we're going to do is extract the uh, luminance data from the color image and we want to work on the luminance because we don't want to be sharpening color noise necessarily uh, in the image we want so this is why this is the purpose behind extracting the the luminance information from the uh, the color image because this is where all of the the uh, detail is uh, contained and uh, we can work on this without uh, working on any color noise and you can just put the uh, color image out of the way here I just tucked it up here out of the way we don't need it right now once you have the luminance data extracted, uh, you're going to want to create a mask that's going to be used in this technique. So we're going to make a duplicate of the luminance image and we're going to call it, um, I, I called it sharpening mask, sharpen mask. Uh, you can call it whatever you'd like. Um, so it's uh, memorable to you. Uh, then we're going to just park the luminance file out of the way for now because we're just going to work on creating this mask. And to do that is really simple. Uh, we just go to the histogram transformation tool, which can also be found if you don't have an icon on your desktop. You can find it under process and intensity transformation and histogram transformation. So we're going to just uh, reset it and we're going to track the view that we are... Um, currently uh, that we currently have selected and um, we're going to clip it a bit now to create our mask so we can auto clip the shadows by clicking this button over here uh, so I'm just going to clip it and uh, this is the result here 
this is the before this is how it looked originally and then when I auto clip the shadows this is how it appears now and we can apply that to our mask image and what we're doing is we're darkening the background because what ultimately what we want to do is we don't want to sharpen the background uh, we want to work on primarily the nebulosity of the uh, the image and uh, and some of the stars as well but uh, primarily we're focusing on the nebulosity of it so this is the purpose behind creating this mask and uh, and darkening it up a bit which I'll demonstrate uh, why that why that is if we just reset this um, we can tweak it a little bit if we want to just to make it uh, the black nice and black and we now have our mask for the uh, enhanced luminance sharpening this uh, gets applied to the next steps and I'm going to show you that so let's just uh, park this mask up here out of the way we're going to come back to our luminance file and we're going to make another duplicate of it and we'll park the original one over here again this one here we're going to name loom USM for uh, that stands for unsharp mask that's a process that you can find in the menu under process all processes and uh, unsharp mask right here so if you click that it opens up the unsharp mask the next step that we want to do is we want to apply our mask to the loom USM image now this is where I can demonstrate what the mask is doing. So the mask is protecting, everything that's red is being protected. So the mask is protecting the background and we're just focusing in on the nebulosity and the stars for this sharpening. So we can leave the mask enabled. We know the mask is enabled because we've got uh, the, the brown, the tab is brown. Uh, that indicates there's a mask applied. We can also see it. We don't have to have the visual of the mask, so we can just hide it for now. The mask is still enabled here uh, by on the tab. You can tell that it's turned a brownish color. That means there's a mask enabled. And if we just go up here to the show hide mask button, uh, we can uh, show the mask or we can hide the mask. So we're just going to hide the mask for this purpose because we don't uh, need to see it. We just need it to do its job. What I usually do is I will make a preview window just to get a feel for how the sharpening is, is working. And I will apply this to the preview window just to give it a test. So if I go and have a look, so this is, this is uh, when the sharpening has been applied and this is when it hasn't been. So um, applied and not applied. Now it's a very subtle change and that's all you're looking for really. You can see that it's it sharpened it a bit. It's brought up the detail in the stars and the nebulosity. That's before and that's after. That's before and that's after. So it is doing its job. You don't, like I said, don't go crazy with it. Uh, that wouldn't uh, look very good if we um, if we bump this up. Say, let's just do some extreme here so that uh, you can see how it starts to look unnatural. Uh, we don't want that. So. Use the standard, uh, uh, the default uh, settings for the unsharp mask and uh, just apply that and that will give you a nice little bit of sharpening to your image. Okay, so that's done. So we can close off the unsharp mask. This is now complete. We can uh, turn off the mask on this Loom USM image and we will just park that up here alongside the mask that we created. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is open up the original luminance file again and you're going to want to uh, clone it, drag the tab, tab off to the side and create a clone. You can park the original luminance image again. We don't need it right now. This uh, clone we're going to name Loom MLT for multi-scale linear transform. And the multi-scale linear transform, I have an icon for it over here that I've created. Uh, you can also access it uh, under process, multi-scale processing, and multi-scale linear transform. Now, this tool can be used to reduce noise in an image. It can also be used to uh, sharpen an image. In this case here, we're going to use it to sharpen the image. Uh, sharpen this luminance image. These are the values that I've selected, that I've chosen, and they I feel they work well. 
you can experiment with these. You can change them and uh, see what works well on your image. Uh, very easy to manipulate. You're just uh, worried about the uh, layer two, three, and four for the sharpening purposes. And you simply uh, select the layer. So we selected layer two. Make sure that detail layer is turned on and you're going to set the bias. Uh, you're going to input the value for the, the bias. So in this case here, I've inputted 300. And you simply do that for the other two layers as well. Down here uh, for the deringing, you're going to want to make sure that it's enabled. So turn deringing on and set that value to 0.1 and leave the bright at zero. So now your multi-scale linear transform tool is ready. Uh, add the mask that we created, apply the mask to the image. Very important that you do that because we don't want to be sharpening in the background details. So let's go back to our preview window here and we'll reapply it. And there's, there's the end result. So this is before we apply the sharpening and this is after we apply the sharpening before and after. So there is a nice subtle bit of sharpening occurring in this image now as well. So let's apply it to our luminance image now and we'll just simply drag the uh, blue triangle. You can either drag the blue triangle onto the image or you can hit the uh, blue square to apply uh, whichever you prefer. I kind of alternate between the two uh, but whichever you uh, whichever you like to use is fine. And then this is our um, second luminance image that has been sharpened, uh, this time using the multi-scale linear transform. So we can close the uh, MLT window now. We don't need it. And we can take turn the mask off. We don't need that on the image as well. And we've now got um, the luminance MLT, sharpened luminance uh, MLT, and we've got the sharpened uh, luminance file using the unsharp mask. We, so we've got these two. So now we, what we want to do is we want to combine uh, the uh, two luminance sharpened uh, files, and we also want to, we want to combine it with the original luminance. So we want to combine these three images into one. And how we do that is by using uh, pixel math. And uh, on the uh, Chaotic Nebula website, um, there was some pixel math that was provided and I've uh, copied it here into my pixel math tool. I'm gonna put this pixel math in the description so you can copy it as well and just uh, paste it into your pixel math. Pixel math, I had an icon set here for it, but you can find it under process and uh, pixel math right here. And you can just click on it to launch it and it calls up this tool. So what you're going to want to do is input this pixel math. Okay, so it's going to combine 35% of the Loom USM. It's going to combine 35% of the Loom MLT and 30% of the original luminance image. It's going to combine those three uh, images. We want to set it to create a new image. Image ID, I've named it Enhanced Loom. You can call it whatever you like to, um, but I've named mine Enhanced Loom. And for color space, select grayscale because a luminance image is a grayscale image. Once you're done, click the apply button, the square, the blue square. And oops, you got to make sure that uh, one of the images is open that you're using within the pixel math. So I just open one of these, click the uh, apply button and it will combine and create. We can close the pixel math. We don't need it. It'll combine and create this new enhanced luminance image that has uh, all the sharpened details in it. So now we can apply this. Uh, we can we can reintegrate this into our color image. So what we want to do next is open our color image again, and uh, we want to integrate this new enhanced luminance sharpened uh, luminance image into our color image. And how we do that is really simple. Go to Process, Color Spaces, LRGB Combination. This is what it'll look like uh, most likely when you open it. And uh, you want to disable the uh, uh, blue, green, and red channels. You just want to leave the luminance channel active. And you simply grab the tab and drop it over onto the LRGB Combination tool. So now what is going to happen is this is going to, when we uh, apply it, it's going to integrate the 
enhanced luminance file to our color image. So you simply drag the blue uh, triangle and drop it onto the color image and uh, it will do its thing. We'll come back when it's done. And there it completed. So we can close the uh, LRGB combination tool. We don't need it anymore. We can uh, minimize and park the enhanced luminance file. We don't need it. And here is our color image with our uh, new luminance inserted into it. And uh, it looks nice and sharp and clean. The stars look great. And so does the uh, details in the nebula. Uh, regions. Uh, you can see the difference if I just go back here one you can see how it uh, is not as uh, as sharp looking and then if I apply the sharpening that we did with the new lumens channel you can see the difference. So I'll just uh, flip back and forth here a little bit and uh, you can get a feel for the uh, difference that it's making. So again subtle differences make a big difference and in this case here it uh, this, um, this method of uh, uh, sharpening your images works really effectively. Something that I think that you'll want to uh, incorporate into your workflow. Okay, that is it. And uh, I appreciate everyone who tuned in and uh, watched this uh, new uh, tutorial on sharpening using an enhanced luminance image. Um, hopefully, you... Uh, Hopefully it was beneficial. Hopefully you uh, got something valuable out of it. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, more great things coming in the future. And uh, I'll be announcing some, uh, some new stuff uh, very soon with regards to giveaways. So stay tuned for that. Uh, some great uh, products to give away. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that uh, you stay in the loop. And uh, we'll see you again in another video. So take care for now and clear skies, everyone.